Look at this! Boom, 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 boom. Hello, YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Factory Town Strategy and Tactics. So today, we've got a named build for you. And this one I've been working on for a while. I've been refining the heck out of this. This has probably been my, ooh, five or six three design of it, just so that I can get it down pat. So I'm pretty confident about this one. And I call this the HVDD, uh, short for the High Velocity Dairy District. Let me show you how it's built. So as you can tell from the name, it involves dairy, more specifically farmlands. The first thing that you need to do to uh, bring this uh, lovely thing in here is find a patch of fodder crops. What are fodder crops? Uh, wheat, potatoes, or carrots. Any of those three will, will do just fine. But you want to find a patch of them and plop yourself down a farmhouse. In this case, we've got ourselves some grain. This is fine right here. But a boom, but a bang. Now, next step is we're going to get ourselves a barn. Oop, there we are. And the barn is going to be placed exactly four tile, well, four empty tiles in between these two right here. Like so. This is because the farmland radius of the farm extends this far, and we don't want to stomp on any more stuff that we don't have to, uh, if that makes sense here. Although we are going to be doing some stomping. Uh, so perhaps that's a little bit, un it's a little unavoidable, but there's other things that we want to do that might stomp on the lands if we built it too close. So, like so. Now, this particular barn, just like with our wood diamond, has a very particular setup for the storage. In the first slot, we want grain or and this could be whatever the fodder crop is so if you're if you're on a carrot patch make it carrots if you're on a potato patch make it potatoes in this case we're on grain we're going to make it grain the second one is going to be animal feed and this is the same item regardless of which fodder crop you use and the last two are going to be fertilizer both of them fertilizer may seem redundant but trust me you'll be happy you had the redundancy now, on the, um, on the side here, we are going to get not one, but two food mills. And we're, uh, we'll point them downwards here, because now we do need to worry about where things are pointed. Uh, and we're going to place them on either side of the barn like this, one space away. Both of these food mills will be making animal feed off of whichever fodder crop. And note that there's a different recipe depending on the fodder crop, but they all are the same ratio and they all produce the same thing at the end. So we will pick our fodder crop in, uh, uh, in here. Now, as far as connecting everything up, down um, here, there's going to be a lot of connections. When I say high velocity, I, I mean high velocity. Uh, you'll see what I mean in more detail momentarily, but um, when we bring this whole thing above. So first things first, I want to start with a shoot, but this time this shoot, this is going to go from the barn to our farmhouse, and we're going to configure that shoot to be fertilizer. Now, all of the other shoots there that are um, between these two are going to be wheat, and it's not just the one. We are going to go nuts here. We are going to do two shoots on the bottom floor here, like that. Then, we're not done yet. We're going to lay down the foundation for a second floor of shoots for all three of these. Since we're already stomping on this cropland here, we might as well use it to the fullest extent we can. Um, so we do um, we do the wood pillars uh, on the first floor, um, the wooden arch on the second floor, their, their second Z level, essentially. And then thirdly, we're going to take the wood scaffold ramp um, and make it so that at the higher point is pointing, is going up to the roof, essentially, like this. And we're going to just do that on these three tiles here. Now we're going to grab our chutes, point it so that way, and then drag it from the farm to the barn all three like this. Why Why that little extra uppity thing right here? Well, 
um, things traveling down chutes are affected by gravity. Uh, and if you have a downward slope, it actually makes them travel a little bit faster. So you get a little bit more throughput out of it by making your first piece slanted. And since you can draw from a buildings up to three levels up, this is like the tippy top from what which, which we can grab from the farm. So that will ensure that everything is flowing to our barn. Now, for our two food mills, as far as hooking them up, we're going to be doing a somewhat similar thing, where, and we're going to be stacking them. We're going to start on the bottom floor, and here, since they won't, since they're you know both sides have something to do, we're going to do, pull from the food mill back to the barn, and they're going to be um, animal feed on both cases. But then we're going to do one, two. And we're going to grab from the barn to here. Now, since the barn can hold anything, you need to define these grabbers and make it whatever fodder crop you've got here. Like that. Oh, but we're not done. Another set of wood pillars. One, two, three. One, two, three. Another set of wood scaffold arches. One, two, three. One, two, three. And another set of scoot, uh, shoot, scoots. Shoots. One, two, three. One, two, three. And another set of grabbers. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. And all of these grabbers are going to be our fodder crop. There's going to be a lot of things flying back and forth here. And, well, like I said, I don't call it the high velocity dairy district for nothing. Because there's a lot of throughput here. Because we're going to be turning pretty much everything to 11 here. Now, down here, the, the workhorse of this whole thing, the dairy um, in, the, in, in this, is going to be, of course, a pasture. And we will place it like that. Uh, it can face any direction as long as it is not the barn. Do not face it against the barn. It needs to point to one of the other roads. And there's going to be two things that we're going to do here, besides dairy. I mean, dairy milk is going to be the cornerstone of this, but we're going to be doing a few other fun things with this build by turning on wool. Now, both of these require two units of water, two units of uh, food, uh, varying units of, of uh, work needed here. But it's still uh, it'll still be pretty good on here. Now, as far as uh, as far as our uh, transference here, we got two things here. One is going to be a shoot in this direction. Actually, we're going to have several shoots, but one of them is going to be a little bit different than the others. This shoot is going to go from the pasture back to the barn, and this is going to be our fertilizer. Our pasture produces fertilizer, our farm needs fertilizer, this uh, barn will store for fertilizer, and this little lower track here will send it to the farm as needed. Handy that. The rest of these are going to, well, almost the, all of these are going to be shoots uh, grabbing animal feed from the barn down to the pasture, because the pasture needs to eat all of that animal feed to turn that into milk and wool. But there's one exception here. Just one. Also, your um, animal feed, despite being a refined product, technically, um, is able to tra uh, travel by shoot. It's one of the one, one of the few refined products that can do that. Most of the rest of the sh things that can travel by shoot are just things that are raw products. Um, also, uh, fertilizer can also travel by shoot. Um, another one of the uh, exceptions here. All right, animal feed and animal feed. Uh, I'm leaving this one blank for the moment just because um, of, our, of our next setup, what we're going to be doing in our next one. So next building that we want is a food market. And uh, we'll send, uh, we'll point this over in this direction. Yes, I know you, you need a town. We'll, 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 I'll, after I finish this custom area build, I'm going to show you what it looks like in a real game so you can see everything in action. Um, but for now, you know what? I'm just, just to, because I don't, the, the icon bothers me. There we go. And then we need a house over here. Actually, there is something important to this build here. Um, we do actually need a house 
near the farmhouse because we're not actually going to be building a road to the farmhouse. We want the, um, we want the, see, see how by, by, despite this farmhouse, and, and I want to thank one of my commenters in an earlier video where I previously and incorrectly stated that you needed a road to the farm. You don't, you just need a house in proximity. So a house somewhere over here will work out just fine. You just need one house. Obviously you want it connected to the rest of the town so it can um, partake in the, um, morale bonuses and obviously there aren't any morale uh, morale bonuses right now but that's that's where we're going with this now going back to our um, farm here first things first we're gonna put down a little path here of um, pegs and then this and we're still gonna be doing the shoots and we're gonna uh, grab some stuff out of the barn and send it to the food market directly what are we grabbing whatever our fodder crop is um this thing since we are dealing with and farming and gathering copious amounts of this fodder crop um we we actually want to send some of it to the food market to just feed the people we're going to be turning a lion's share of that into that and you'll be you might be saying well pinstar isn't that kind of sp spreading it a little thin there's a little secret sauce to this build actually there's a lot of secret sauce to this build but there's a component that i haven't shown you yet you'll just bear with me trust me on this now the other hookup we want to do here is we want to go to our pipes and we want to pipe from our pasture to our food market yes even though the fluid pipe has this little um um you know water drop on here it can transport lots of other fluids like milk so this will just directly send milk into there, and milk is uh, something that people will enjoy. So that's two different types of food we're producing so far. But wait, there's more. All right, next component is going to be our cell. We're going to make ourselves a workshop, and we're going to do it on this, uh, um, you know, on this side of the um, pasture, straight up. And we're going to make cloth out of wool. It, there are two different cloth recipes. Make sure you pick the cloth out of wool recipe. One wool makes one cloth. Next. Um, oh yeah, the other, uh, actually before we do that, we are going to do boom, 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 boom. I like to make two different Things. Also, by this point, even though we're going to be doing wood conveyor belts, at this point, in by the time you get enough tech to make this whole setup work, you should have cloth conveyor belt tech. In fact, I'm going to do that just to emphasize that point. You should have cloth conveyor belt tech, so use cloth conveyor belts when you can't use shoots. Shoots are still better than cloth conveyor belts. But here we're going to do wool and a wool, like that. Now, over here we're going to place ourselves a kitchen because we're going to be doing a lot more than just giving people raw milk. Kitchen, kitchen, where for art thou? Kitchen, there you are. And we're going to place this one away from each of these. And we're going to do the re two recipes here, butter and cheese. Yeah, milk is useful beyond itself. It can make butter, it can make cheese, and we're going to be making so much of it that we're going to be overflowing with all of them. It's going to be glorious. But a few other things that we need to do to prep this. First off, we do need to get some cloth in here um, in order to make the cheese, and that's kind of the whole point of the workshop making cloth. So we will do this. There's not a whole huge demand for cloth, so we're just going to do uh, one one cloth conveyor belt's worth, but that should be enough. Um, now, as far as sending the um, finished products here, when it comes to two different finished products, I like having giving them their own belts, so one doesn't gum up the works for the other. So we're going to do each of these. One, two, one, two. Boom, boom. We're going to make one of you. Come on. One of you are going to be cheese. One of you is going to be butter. Doesn't matter which is which, as long as each of them gets one. 
Now, there's one more thing. How do we get the uh, milk to the uh, thing? Well, just like with uh, pumping it directly in here, we are going to turn to our pipes. And we're going to go down here. But we have a, an important ratio to maintain here. We don't want all of it to be going in as raw. In fact, we want the lion's share to be processed. So we're going to go to our logistics block. We're going to go to a splitter. We're going to rotate it like this. Put the splitter like this. But this is just a natural 50-50. We, we want more than a 50-50. So in the latest patch, they introduced output ratios. Um, so we're going to select this. We're going to see the left-hand output is a 5 to 1 ratio. We want a lot of uh, milk to go towards our kitchen. Trust me, there'll be more than enough to hit the, the enough raw milk to pe keep people happy. Now, you might be saying, all right, well, that's all the dairy, right? So that's all district done? Well, no, because this right here, the amount of cloth that cheese demands is so little that setting all of this up would be a bit of a waste if we didn't actually utilize it for something else. And we've got a little bit room here in this little, you know, squarish district here. So we're going to actually dabble into a little non-food um, item here by going to our building ourselves a tailor like that. And we will loop this up here. And our tailor friend here is going to take all of that excess cloth and make them into shirts. Uh, and then last but not least, a general goods store like that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we will feed, we'll do two things of cloth over here. Oops. So hang on. Two things of cloth over here, one thing of shirts. And the reason why I'm putting everything up on level two, even though like we don't, we're not running roads on there, is just so that I have the option to lay roads under there should I need it for a future build. I've kind of gotten that habit of not using the ground floor unless I actually need it. Like this little exchange right here, we need the ground floors. This area right here, we need the ground floor. Uh, these three, we need the ground floor. But everything else, we can keep elevated. Now, one last thing here is we're going to be producing so much wool that even with the cloth, even with the shirts, there's going to be more than we need. So we will do one and only one cloth conveyor belt um, of wool here. We're going to pull that from here and dump it directly into the general store. And that, my friends, is the high velocity dairy district. Now, as soon as possible, you're going to want to uh, put uh, farm fields and make sure that your entire farm area is planted because this, 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 this is hard on a farm. <laughs> but there's one more thing that I need to flip to a real game to show you that makes all of this work. So let me show you it in action. Okay. Oh, one other, th uh, here, here we are with a live example. Uh, one other thing I forgot, um, a whole crap ton of wells that are plugged into your, um, into your pasture and at least one plugged into your farm. But m I would say about at least four plugged into your pasture because this setup demands a crap ton of, uh, of thing. Also plug in workers, um, to all of your stuff here. You want five workers at each of these. Five workers and ten workers in here. Now, let me, uh, right now all of our, 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 our setup is dormant um, because we've ripped out all of the wheat here. But eh, things are about to sprout. So let me show you what exactly what I mean by high velocity. Oh, one last thing. So the thing, the special sauce that makes this whole thing work is the farming specialization. This, this, you need to have this in order to make this specific setup work. But oh boy, does it work. And the farming specialization is really, really powerful in of itself. But it doubles the output of all of your crops, including whatever fodder crop you're doing. Doubles the output of the wool. Doubles the output of the fertilizer. Um, and, um, and more. 
the um, so you will have a metric f ton of raw materials to work with, as you will see shortly. All right, let's fire it up. In just a moment, there it goes. And that, my friends, is what I'm talking about when I say high velocity. Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. These are flowing through here. They are passing back out through here. And look at this. Now, one other thing that you may want to uh, consider doing is adding coin boosters. Because, like, even with this, this is having trouble keeping up. So, coin boosters might be a smart move. Also, upgrading your pasture as much as possible is probably a good idea. But now, we are making cloth uh, at a copious level. We are making t-shirts at a copious level. Um... These are getting in here. Cheese and butter going at copious levels. Now, here's the here's the why I think this specific setup is so good. So if we look at the happiness of of a of a house here, and we remember going back to my my secrets to happiness here. Um, so this particular house has a five out of five basic food thing. I did the I did some searching on the wiki, and houses go all the way up to a level of ten. At level 10, they only demand six different types of basic foods. Now, the this particular setup here, if we look at our, our fulfillments, the, the raw fodder crop is giving us one happiness. Uh, the raw milk is giving us one happiness. The butter is giving us two happiness. And the cheese is giving us two happiness. This setup by itself satisfies a max level house's basic food needs entirely. The other nice thing is, is let's say you have a um, a town center way out in the boonies, some you know some some other place that you've got set up, um, and you're starting to build up a little town right here. Well, guess what? You're making so much milk that you might as well just um, you you can start piping milk from your high velocity dairy district out to your other location and then set up a um, a cheese and uh, butter shop over here and get the food fulfilled at your new town just as you are with this one so not only is it really really high levels of food but it's also mobile you can very easily get it out there. And in addition, we're getting two points of happiness with clothing. Uh, one from the shirt and one from the raw wool in here. So that, my friends, is the High Velocity Dairy District. Now, once your region gets even bigger, you may actually want to rip up the wool part, uh, get the cloth from an external source, and just go pure milk. If uh, if you need to do if you uh, need to supply any an entire fully developed region, but all of that off of the back of a single farmhouse and a single well tended farm field here, yeah, it's it's powerful, it's potent, and also not to mention the um, cheese and butter are worth a lot of gold coins, twenty coins per cheese, and you get two of them every time they do their thing, twelve coins per butter. And this thing only requires two milk. So, yeah, you're going to be rolling in the dough when you get this. Uh, so, I hope you guys found this high-velocity uh, dairy district uh, useful. You want to see it uh, in more in action or see how I build up a town um, from start to finish? I'm actually going to be streaming tonight um, at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. Um, so, save the date, um, check it out, and uh, come, come say hi. We'll build a town from scratch, utilizing some of the builds that we've uh, I've already shown off, and go into the future. Um, so if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya!